Hey everyone, my name is Dan Peterson and I'm an advanced trainer for the Nurtured Heart Approach. I wanted to let you know of a new resource that's available. For those of you that are interested in additional ways to implement the Nurtured Heart Approach in your home, your school, or your office. Uh, it's an ebook that I created along with some other advanced trainers, some parents, teachers, even some clients that is geared towards giving you hands-on, concrete ways to implement this approach in whatever setting you work in. So what I've done is I've kind of surveyed some people, I've talked with some people, I've observed some classrooms and just kind of came up with some really easy ways that you can start implementing this approach in, in whatever setting you work. And what I wanted to show you real quickly is a picture of a classroom that I think really captures one of the key tenets of the Nurtured Heart Approach, which is the adults, the significant uh, people in kids' lives as being the ultimate entertainment center or be the prize or even this concept of we are the toys, we're toys are us. This idea really kind of speaks to the heart of what kids truly need and that's a connection, a relationship, a sense of belonging with their teacher, their parent, their, their therapist, their significant caregiver. And that a lot of the behavior they have is really rooted in how do I get that relationship need met. This classroom that I'm about to show you, I think, really encapsulates a, a teacher who truly understands that their mission, their primary purpose as a teacher is to be that ultimate entertainment center. Traditionally, what you'll see in classrooms um, are classrooms where desks are set up in pods, where all the students are kind of just in different clumps or in different rows, but usually the teacher is either at the front or the side of the class. And when a kid becomes disruptive or becomes defiant or disrespectful, maybe even impulsive, they usually get sent to move their desk right next to the teacher. And although this makes sense because the teacher really wants to keep a closer eye on, on the student, it sends a really conflictual message to the kid. And that message is, I am more available, I pay more attention, you get to be close to me when you make a mistake. And although the student really truly wants that, and maybe being disrupted to get that need met, it actually sends this message that I'm more important to the teacher when I have problems. So I wanted to show you a, a quick picture of this classroom that I think really confronts that, that, um, that issue in, in a way that helps kids get their needs met, helps the teacher be the prize, and helps download to the kids that they are important, that they can get their needs met whenever they need to and, and however they need to. So let me move out of the way, we'll talk a little bit about this classroom. So here, here's what the classroom actually looks like. As you can see, the, the teacher's desk, which is you know, the, the laptop, the projector, it's kind of hard to see because there's a lot of things in the way, but really what he has decided to do is say that I'm gonna be the center of this classroom. I'm gonna actually make it the norm where the desks that you can see, I think there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven desks that are actually bumped up against his. Now these aren't the kids that got bumped there because they're in trouble. These are the kids that maybe are impulsive, maybe energy challenged, maybe just kind of high needs, but he's made it the norm for them to be next to him. He's made it the message that I know you have more uh, needs, you might need more some of my attention, but it's not because you're in trouble, it's because that's your need and I welcome that need and I wanna be here and be available to you. And if you kind of scroll out, you can see the surrounding desks in that horseshoe shape where it's normal, it's, it's everybody's facing the teacher, everybody's in a community, everybody is right next to the teacher in the sense that here you are in my classroom, I have, you have my undivided attention. And the message that is real clear to the kids is you're not here because you're in trouble, you're here because you have value and you have importance and I know that I have a really um, gift that I have to offer you and that's my relationship. And this teacher I don't know that they intentionally set the classroom up, but I think it's a real perfect example of what you can start to do and start some ideas that you can start to generate by thinking as being the prize. Now, this book that I have is called Creating Greatness is, you know, geared towards a school system, gear, geared towards classrooms, geared towards a therapist office or even home, but a lot of the ideas are really interchangeable so you can use it in whatever setting you want. I would really highly encourage you to invest in this resource. I think it was really helpful for myself and for some other people that I've been working with and just giving them some really clear-cut tools to use to implement this approach and I truly hope that you take advantage of it.